Cells use carbohydrates as a source of energy and as a way of storing energy. The source of energy is usually small, simple sugars like glucose. Plants can store this in the form of starch, uh, while animals choose to store their glucose as something called glycogen. Carbohydrates are molecules that are made up of just three elements. Uh, just like lipids were, they are made up of carbons, hydrogens and oxygens. And we can organise carbohydrates into different groups based on their size, whether they're small, simple, single sugars, double sugars or long chain sugars. So, carbohydrates that contain just one sugar are called monosaccharides. Um, there are two types you need to be familiar with. There are uh, hexoses and pentoses. Hexoses have a hexagon shape, things like glucose, and pentose are uh, pentagon shaped molecules, or rings, and those are things like uh, ribose. Now if you join two monosaccharides together you can make a disaccharide, which is two sugar molecules. And if you join lots of sugar molecules together you can make things called polysaccharides. Oligosaccharides are carbohydrates that are between 3 and 10 sugar units long and polysaccharides technically are more than 10. So let's start with monosaccharides. These are the most simplest carb of carbohydrates and you need to be familiar with ribose and deoxyribose uh, which are these 5 carbon pentose sugars and glucose, fructose and galactose which are all 6 carbon hexose sugars. However, you need to really know the detail and be able to draw glucose and ribose. These are the two that are very important. So here is ribose. As you can see, it is a pentagon shape. Uh, there are five carbons joined in a ring with oxygen at the top there and a CH2OH group coming off the uh, fourth carbon. Glucose is a bit of an interesting one because it actually exists in two forms or isomers and you do need to know both of them. So there is this one which is called alpha glucose and there is this one which is called beta glucose. Now you may not initially see what the difference is, but if you look at the first carbon, you will see that in alpha glucose, it has hydrogen on the top and OH at the bottom. Um, and in beta glucose, these are flipped the other way up. Now this may seem like a very small difference, but it's a very important difference because when glucose forms polymers, when you join lots of glucose molecules together and form polysaccharides, then depending on whether you're using alpha or beta glucose will give you different polysaccharides with different properties, as we're going to see later on. So, in order to make a disaccharide, you're going to need to join two of these monosaccharides together. And we're going to use a reaction that we've seen before, which is called a condensation reaction. And we form what's called a glycosidic bond. Now you need to know the following disaccharides, maltose, sucrose and lactose, and you should know, as shown by this table, what uh, the monosaccharides are uh, that are used in order to produce these disaccharides. So again, like I said, we're going to use a condensation reaction for this. This means we're going to remove a water molecule, and as you can see, if we take two alpha glucose molecules here, and we remove the H2O from there, we join them together with that oxygen and that is what we call a glycosidic bond and we have made water in that process so that's a condensation reaction just like we saw in the lipids. In this case we would call it a 1,4 glycosidic bond to be specific because it is between the carbon 1 on the first monosaccharide there and it is between carbon 4 on the second monosaccharide. Remember again that uh, condensation reactions are reversible we can do what's called a hydrolysis reaction in order to reverse it and make the two monosaccharides from the disaccharide. Now if you continue joining monosaccharides together into long long chains then you can end up with a polysaccharide. These are perfect for storing sugar in a cell because they are insoluble because they're so big uh, and so they do not affect the water potential and therefore um, osmosis is unaffected but also they can be quite compact and take up a little space, which is also a very good thing for the cell. You need to know specifically about three polysaccharides, starch, glycogen, and cellulose. So let's start with starch. Now starch is the energy store used by plants. So when a plant makes glucose and photosynthesis, it stores this glucose as starch because it's insoluble and it's compact. Starch is actually made up of two compounds though. It's made up of amylose and amylopectin. 
So here is a diagram of amylose. As we can see, it's a long, long, long chain between 200 and 5,000 alpha glucose molecules, which are all joined together by 1,4 glycosidic bonds. But because they're joined by 1,4 glycosidic bonds, it actually causes the molecule to bend uh, at, at each uh, bond slightly, and it starts to coil round and round and round, and it actually means that amylose is a spiral. Amylopectin is also made up of alpha glucoses, but these are branched because we've got, not only we've got 1,4 glycosidic bonds, as you can see here, we've also got some 1,6 glycosidic bonds, which causes these branches to come off. Now the branching changes the properties of the molecule. The side chains can be easily broken off when energy required. And this means that starch is a great storage molecule because it has some sort of long uh, uh, storage facility in terms of the fat of the uh, amylose, but it also got some quick um, release uh, energy store with amylopectin because it can break off these uh, side chains quite easily. Now animal cells do not store their glucose as starch, they store it as glycogen instead. But glycogen actually has quite a similar structure to amylopectin that we saw in starch. It's made of many alpha uh, glucose molecules with a combination of 1,4 and 1,6 glycosidic bonds. Um, it's basically the same as amylopectin, but it's got a lot more branching. We, uh, as I said, this is used by animals, but it's also used by fungi as well. Cellulose, now you've probably come across cellulose before when learning about plant cells. It's a very, very strong substance used for making cell walls. Now in order to achieve this, it has to have a very specific structure to give it that, that strength, that fibrous strength. And it's actually made of beta glucose molecules joined by 1,4 glycosidic bonds. Uh, alternate molecules though are actually inverted so the bonding can take place. Because of this, because of this alternate um, orientation, it means that one, uh, the bonds, some point up and some point down, which gives it a lovely, perfect, straight, fibrous structure. And what that also means is that you can form crosslinks, which are actually done with hydrogen bonds between the different cellulose molecules. And this means that you can uh, make fibres of cellulose, which are extremely, extremely strong. So in summary, in terms of functions, starch is a very good um, storage molecule for plants because of the quick and slow energy release due to the combination of amylose and amylopectin. Glycogen is a source of fast release energy because the side chains of glucose are easily broken off in, uh, for use in respiration in animals and fungi. And cellulose is very hard to digest as many organisms do not possess the enzymes required to break those 1,4 glycosidic bonds between beta glucose molecules. So that's why things like ruminants, such as cows, actually need uh, bacteria living in their gut in order to help them break down cellulose because it is so strong and these bonds are so hard to break.